Hey everybody, it's Ripley. We're talking about section 8.2 Law of Sines. We're dealing with triangle trigonometry now. Okay, we've left the land of uh, functions, things of uh, nature. Now we're just dealing with basically real world context and applications of trig. All right, now, but in the back of your head, you still got to have those, you know, inverse sines and cosines. And you got to have the, you got to be able to visualize what the functions look like. I'm going to skip ahead to a section here. We'll sort of do this parenthetically. 8.4, because I'm going to steal something, because the proof of the law of signs is, is much simpler if you have this. So check it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just cheat here just a little bit. So we're going to do this. And I'm going to call this any triangle, which I'm going to call, let's see, angle A, angle B, angle C. And um, this is going to be, let's call this side B. This is side A. And this is side C. And I'm going to find, that's a little C, this is a big C, this is a capital C, okay? I'm going to find the area of this triangle real quick. And uh, the way that I'm going to do it, because I know that the area of a triangle typically is one half the base times the height, right? We know that. So I'm going to call this height. Notice I've, I've strategically called this B too, so I don't have any confusion. Now, watch. If I have this as angle A, this guy right here, so I'm calling this A, I could just as easily call this theta. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to call it angle A, um, staying true to the, to the geometric context. All right, Check it out. Do you agree that I could figure out what H is because I know that the sine of angle A, now notice when I drop this height, it comes in at a right triangle. Now, I'm talking, remember, I'm still talking about triangle ABC here. So the area of triangle ABC, so let's just kind of put this as ABC. That's the name of this triangle. However, I can solve for little parts of this triangle because I get this nice little, this little right angle height right here. And I know that the sine of A is equal to what? It's H over C, isn't it? So I know this implies that H is equal to sine of A times C. This is a little risky. Typically, I'll write this as C um, sine of A. Now, so doesn't that imply that this area formula becomes the following? Watch. I know the area. I'm going to write area so I don't confuse this A. Let's go area. I don't confuse that A with an angle. So area is equal to 1 half B C sine of A. Now, similarly, I could do, think about this, in terms of orienting this, I know that the sine of C is equal to H over A, right? And I could, if you think about it, isn't this exactly the same thing as I could do 1 half AB sine of C, right? I mean, think about that. I just do this exact same process over, only I do it from the, the point of view of C. Similarly, I could write this as 1 half a C sine of B. Correct? They're all equal. They're all exactly the same. Now, since they're all equal, is there any law that says that I can't divide everything by the same thing? Most specifically, I'm going to divide by 1 half a BC. Now watch what happens when I do this. I'll do this in different colors. When I divide this term by 1 half ABC, the 1 halves go away, the B's go away, and the C's go away. And I end up with sine A over A. Now notice that's the sine of the angle A and the ratio, or excuse me, the side A. True? Let me change colors again. Over here, when I divide through, the 1 half goes away. But this time, this A and this A, and now this B and this B go away. And look what I'm left with. Sine C over C. Similarly, look at this. When I divide this guy, the 1 half goes away. This A goes away. And this C goes away. And I'm left with sine B over B. This is... The, ooh, yuck, the ugly law of signs. That's it. Isn't that beautiful? It's so simple. It's so elegant. It's easy to make. All right? All right. By the way, we will prove in, in um, 
section 8.4. Like I said, I borrowed this a little bit, but there's no reason why we can't get a little bit ahead. I mean, look at this. Given any triangle, let's get a little ahead here. This is, this is 8.4 stuff. Given any triangle, all right, it doesn't matter. I drew it as kind of a right. Let's draw it so that it's not a right triangle. Real easy to prove. Given any triangle, using exactly the same technique that I did right here, right? If this guy right here is the height, I have side A and side B and the included angle theta. This guy right here is called, let's write this up. I'm running out of space here. This is called the included, included angle. Well, look, the area, simple. It's, notice what I got here, right here, oof, it's one half, one half AB sine of theta, where this guy is the included angle. Easy. I just stole a trick, right? I don't know why your author chose to stick it in section 8.4, but alas, he did, and we're stuck with what we got because it's the easiest way to prove the law of sines. Now, let's play. Notice what we have here are three ratios, okay? So let's just have some fun for a sec. Let's say that I've got a side of length 10. I've got an angle of, say, uh, 120 degrees. Let's Now let's make it 100 degrees. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a length of 15, okay? Now, clearly, not a right triangle. I want to be able to solve the triangle, which means I want to find all of the angles and all of the sides. So how do I do that? Well, let's look. I mean, if I wanted to, I could label this angle A, this side A, this side B, this angle B, this side C, and this angle C, right? And then all that I have to do is I got to stumble in and look at my, look at my formula. Now, I'm doing a really simple case here, and believe it or not, law of sines is the most complicated. It's the trickiest to deal with. So you got to be real careful. But for right now, let's let's bask in the glory for a sec. Okay? <clears throat> what do I know? Well, I know these corresponding angle sides. Notice that this is sine A and A, and notice that A lives across from side A. Side C lives across from angle C. Side B lives across from angle B. And that's how these ratios are created. It's the angle and the side across, the angle, the side across, the angle, the side across. Well, I have an angle and a side across, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write something up just because. I'm going to write the sine of 100 degrees is to side 15 because, I mean, A over A. Now, what can I solve for? What piece of information do I have? Well, I have side B. So according to, to this, I need the, the sine of the opposite angle. Now, we have to be a little bit careful here, and I'll show you why in a sec, but let's go slow. Just, I hope everybody agrees that by the law of sines, I can write the ratio sine of B is to 10. Because remember, this is angle B, and that's side B, right? So in a puff of algebra, do you see that sine of B is equal to 2 thirds sine of 100 degrees, which implies that B is equal to the inverse sine of two-thirds sine of 100 degrees. Of 100 degrees. Now, if you're tempted to do something clever here, don't. Slow your roll. Just look at it. You might be tempted to say, oh, this, turn, this turns into two-thirds of 100 degrees. No, 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 remember. The inverse sine of the sine of x only equals x if it's between negative pi halves and pi halves, so between negative 90 and 90. So that wouldn't even make sense. Plus, we haven't even dealt what the inverse sine does as far as these coefficients. Two-thirds is just a coefficient along for the ride. So we got to be really careful with this process because, again, I'm going to keep writing this up because hopefully it'll stick. I'm going to follow this arrow for a sec. Remember, inverse signs only spit out values between negative pi halves and pi halves, i.e. negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees. 
Now that can become really, really tricky, particularly when I know that I have a, an obtuse angle. When I have an angle that's greater than 90, I'm in trouble because arc signs will, or inverse signs will never give me values greater than 90. So I have to be a little more clever. And there's kind of a rule of thumb there that we'll talk about. And that's basically use the law of signs to solve for your acute angles and then use the fact that, remember, we always know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C always has to equal 180 degrees. So there's a general rule with this, a warning. Let's even write that down. Warning. Okay, law of signs is no bueno, no good for solving, solving for obtuse, which just means uh, greater than 90 degrees, angles. It's useless because arc sine doesn't spit out values bigger than 90. Okay, and I'll beat on you about that. So let's solve for B. Enough of me hemming and hawing and screaming and yelling. What's B equal? Well, we'll use our calculators. So we'll stumble over here. I'm going to go, let's see, I probably should clear this out. I got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's clear, let's clear the history too. Give us a nice tabla rasa, as it were. Okay, so I need to go, let's see, second inverse sine of, now I've got two thirds divided by three times the sine of 100 degrees, in print, in print, right? So it's the inverse sine, two-thirds sine of 100 degrees. Let's see what we get. I get, back over here, I get 41. Let's go approximately 41 degrees. Now, <clears throat> I know that I've yelled at you guys to, to leave these as, um, leave them rounded to thousands, but just for simplicity's sake for right now, because it's 41.0364 degrees, let's leave it as 41 degrees. So guess what? I have a piece of information. B equals 41 degrees. That's kind of nice. Now, what do I need? Well, if I'm going to solve for, for this guy, that's pretty easy, right? Doesn't that imply that C is equal to, since all three angles sum to 180, I know that this is going to be 180. If I solve for C in this formula, I get 180 minus A plus B. Right? So it's just 100 plus 41. Hey, guess what? C equals 39 degrees. Yahoo! I'm, you guys, I'm more than halfway home. Now all I got to do is solve for C. Well, that's easy. That's no problem. Now I can use whichever angle and whichever side combination that I want. Now, let me give you another little warning. Let's write this one in blue. In blue. So, which one do I want to use? Do I want to write sine of 100 degrees is to 15 as sine of 39 degrees is to C? Do I want to use that one? Or do I want to use the sine of 41 degrees is to 10 as the sine of 39 degrees is to C? Now, theoretically, both will work. Here's the problem. Nine times out of ten, this is going to be rounded. Whoops, this is going to be rounded. And if I have to round and then round and then round again, I get what's called accuracy drift. I will drift away from the accurate number. Now, this 100 degrees isn't rounded. This guy showed up at the beginning of the problem. So this is actually the one that I'm going to want to use. All right, so I'm going to use the one where I don't have a rounded angle. Nine times out of ten, you're going to use the one where you don't have a rounded angle. 